Hey everyone, so this video is dedicated to just looking over a few of our menus so we have some kind of sense of how these are organized. Okay, so up here we've got a file menu which kind of has all the typical things we expect from any kind of file menu in any program we find with things like opening and saving and closing. But there's also bouncing your mix and an import for audio and video and MIDI and things and export for some of those things as well. So a few things like that in the file menu. Edit has a whole variety of things that will that you'll deal with when it comes to editing audio. Uh, some of those things might be, you know, separating a clip. So these boxes you see here are clips. So you might want to separate one and you can do that without a shortcut by going up to the edit and separating the clip. You can so separate them in different ways. So there's some cool stuff in there that you can, you'll learn to use. We won't do that right now, but we'll have a sense of where to find these things later, hopefully as a result of what we do today. Fades are in there too, right? Although you're going to want to use a shortcut for that for sure. So edit menu is kind of general audio editing things, clip editing things. And then here's one that can be a little bit confusing. So view and window can be a little bit like the, both of those things feel a little bit like they're both dealing with what you're seeing, which is true. Okay, so window is really about the major chunks of the program, right? So the mix window, full window, full it part, like kind of portion of the interface that's designed for Pro Tools. Edit window, big window, right? There's also MIDI editor window if you need it at some point, right? Which we will, it's fun. So I'm gonna go back to mix and edit. And the difference is, is the windows are really individual movable windows. There's the transport window. Whereas the view is about customizing the windows. So if I'm in the edit window, I have a whole bunch of things I can customize. If I'm in the mix window, I can also customize what I see. So view is about customizing the window that you're in and window is about switching between those major chunks of the program, the windows themselves. So a whole bunch of those, but the main ones are all right at the top, right? Mix, edit, MIDI editor. There's also a score editor, which if you're doing some MIDI stuff, sometimes you write some demonstration MIDI and then you don't really plan on using that MIDI for the actual recording at the end. You just wanted to have a, a sense of what it was going to sound like. So you might do an instrument, a MIDI instrument, write the music there, and then export actual music notation to a musician who will then play that part. Now it's kind of quick and dirty, though there are often things that look a little bit funny in here, but overall if you need a quick printout of a score, you can also use that window to get there, right? The score editor window. All right, then we have track, the track menu. This is all about dealing with things you do with tracks, which makes sense, it's called the track menu. So it's also the place where you create a click track. That's one of those places where when you first start with Pro Tools, it's a little confusing because you'd think, oh, I just make a new track, track new, to get a click track, but a click track is a special thing. And so it's its own button. So create click track is there. Don't expect to get a click track. If you just click new, you'll get other kinds of tracks when you do that. So it'll give you different choices. So things like audio track or instrument track, MIDI track, master fader. So we have a variety of things we can do. We can split a stereo track into mono, uh, freeze a track or commit a track. We're going to learn about how all these things work. Separately bounce a track, a single track. So all the things that are kind of special that deal with tracks are there. Clip menu is about dealing with clips. Clips are these chunks of audio or MIDI information. So clips are these separated bits of information that you can play with. You can create new ones or split these larger ones into smaller ones, which we'll learn about. And clips used to be called regions, uh, starting Pro Tools 9 and before, I believe they were called regions, and then they got renamed to clips. So you'll hear engineers a fair amount 
using both those terms interchangeably, clip and region. So clips is the current terminology. And again, all kinds of things we can do with clips. That's where we go if we want to adjust a single clip or do other things to that. Event is mainly for time operations, speeding up a chunk of audio, slowing it down, and having that stuff happen kind of automatically. You can make tempo changes like that. Uh, there's kind of a cool identify beat feature, as, uh, which will help you if you import maybe a sample tune or something, but you don't know it's tempo, you can make a selection and then go event and identify beat. So that's pretty cool. A uh, great way of figuring out what the tempo of a session is. We can do another video on that at some point. It's really simple. So time things are event, time and tempo. Audio Suite is plugins that you want to render a chunk of, you want to render to a chunk of audio uh, without having it being in real time. So maybe I want to just apply a plugin like a reverb or some kind of effect to one small piece of audio. Um, and maybe I don't want to do that real time. I know exactly what effect I want. I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, audio Suite is the way to go. Otherwise, you will put effects on in the mix window in this inserts section or on a bus track, which we'll learn about. Uh, Audio Suite actually has a few plugins too that aren't available in real time, like a reverse of the audio. You can't do that real time. It doesn't know what to reverse or where the edges are of the chunk of audio that it's supposed to flip around. So instead what you do is you use Audio Suite and you just render, and there's a few special effects like that that are only available in Audio Suite. So just to demo that, for instance, I have this little bit of drum audio here that I'll solo. Yeah, and so there are special only available in Audio Suite, which means non real time, right? It just renders and it's done, uh, that do some fun stuff like reverse. So let's try that one. So I'm just going to go to reverse, and I have to have something selected, and then I just render it, and then I get backwards drums. So all kinds of cool stuff like that that you can do with Audio Suite that um, might not be available in a real-time plugin. So uh, Audio Suite, non-real-time plugin processing. So those are pretty cool and useful. Options. So this is about turning things on or off. And my absolute go-to most of the time, uh, most of these there's of course a shortcut for, you're turning things on and off. So uh, often you're just clicking a button or something, but there's one that I go to a lot that does not have a shortcut. So, or at least not one that I have, not one that I've built or anything. Nothing's built in to do this, at least that I'm aware of. So, options, turning things on and off. One of the most annoying thing that's on by default, default often, is the edit window scrolling. And you can of course change this in preferences. I just got a new version of Pro Tools and haven't set all my preferences yet. But edit window scrolling. So no scrolling is selected right now. So watch what happens. If I'm zoomed in and I play the audio, you'll see the playhead move along as it goes through the audio. And it's gone. So uh, our view did not follow the playback, which is sometimes useful, but most of the time annoying. So what we can do is we go to our options, edit window scrolling, and I usually pick page. So page, when you hit play, it will f hit the edge of the page and create the next chunk of about the same amount of audio. So watch, here we go. And hits edge and a whole new chunk. So it will follow the playhead. Options, toggling things on and off, MIDI things on and off, loop playback on and off, right? So toggling options. Setup, we've already dealt with the playback engine dialog, and these are all dialogs. 
So you frequently use the hardware playback and I.O. for sure. I.O. stands for input and output. So that's where you can see all the inputs and outputs that are assigned inside Pro Tools that are linked up to your interface and some other really cool stuff that we'll talk about later. But these are all dialogues. Dialogues are windows that open and require you to interact with it before it will go away. So a dialogue, you have to have a dialogue with this window in order for it to go away. So I'm gonna click OK, and now it will go away. So setup is all dialogues, and often these have to do with uh, hardware peripherals, things that are plugged into Pro, Pro Tools that it's supposed to be communicating with. Peripherals, so maybe your MIDI controllers in here, this kind of stuff. And then the window file menu we already talked about. Uh, we're not gonna worry about Avid Link and of course the help menu is always nice if you need help there's a reference guide bunch of shortcuts that's super useful uh, knowledge base pro tools help so a lot of those help things are built right in if you're confused go there see what you can find okay that's it that's the general menu structure for pro tools okay see you in the next one